Allow me to break the ice. I'd particularly like to just briefly look now at the Qurans as they exist in the world today. Because then I've been told that they're all the same, but they're actually not the same. I've got two Qurans here, what are called the Qur'ats, the readings. And I want, to, want us to look at these readings. So this is the Qur'an according to Imam Hafs, this, uh, which we would use in Britain and Australia. And this is the one from North Africa according to Imam Warsh. And these are the types of differences we find. Let's look at that first one. It says... Kul Rabi Yailamu, which is say my Lord knows. But in the Hafs version it says Kala Rabi Yailamu, which is he said my Lord knows. Now that actually changes the subject of the verse. In the first one it's God giving a command. In the second it's a record of what Muhammad said. So that's a different subject. Or you'll see here. Um, in, in, in the Hafs version, it's katala, uh, which is the active of kill. But in the wash, it's, it's the passive, was killed. And so again, that, that changes the meaning. The prophet is either killing somebody or he's being killed. Or again here, and, and you, we find many of these types of ones. And, uh, and remember, the, 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 the wash one has a slightly different script. It, it's, they just have a slightly different way of pointing their, 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 their decritical dots. But you'll see that it's we give mercy or he gives mercy. So it changes the pronoun. Now, do not get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that the Quran's corrupt by doing this. right? Because I actually think that this is something we both have. We both have small variants within our text. And we just shouldn't exaggerate about it. And that's all I'm asking Muslim leaders to do. To, to not exaggerate about our books. We've got ample evidence to show that the Bible's been well preserved. And we can correct any errors that have crept in. And I believe we can do a similar thing with the Quran, but the Quran itself has a whole range of variants. There's actually around one, what have we got here, the number? 1,354 differences between those two Qurans. So they're not all the same. All right, everyone, chill. He talks about the Quran wasn't preserved because there were many differences. One says, um, um, Qul, Allah said, um, say, and another one says, he said. But then what Samuel fails to mention is the difference between what us Muslims got and what Christians have got is we got multiple readings. Christians have got variant readings. Say Bahari, volume 6, book 61, um, hadith number 514, the Prophet Muhammad and whom BP said, this Quran has been revealed to me, recited in seven different ways. So recite of it whichever way is easier for you or read as much as it may be easy for you. Now, these... We got one skeleton text and multiple ways to recite it, and these multiple ways complement each other. For example, in the opening statement, um, opening surah of the Quran, one way to recite it is king of the day of judgment. Another way to recite it is owner of the day of judgment. Now, God is both owner and king of the day of judgment. We, we believe that, and both of these readings go back to the Prophet Muhammad, and whom be peace. Whereas, the Bible manuscripts... Um, they cause a lot of problems. For example, in John chapter 7, when Jesus was asked whether he's going to a feast, according to some manuscripts, he says, I am not yet going, but then, he's, then he hid and went to the feast. According to some manuscripts, he says, I am not going, and then he, hid, he basically hid and went to the feast. In other words, he told a lie. As Bruce Metzger points out, the scribes added the word yes to get around this problem. Now, if this reading is the original reading, that means Jesus told a lie. Hence, Jesus wasn't sinless. Hence, Jesus wasn't the perfect sacrifice. Hence, there was no um, crucifixion. See how one little word, one manual variant can actually change the whole theology of Christianity. Also, in the baptism, according to the Gospel of Luke, in the oldest manuscripts, God says to um, Jesus, this day have I begotten thee. But as Bruce Metzger mentions, scribes chained this because this actually showed that Jesus was adopted at the baptism rather than being the eternal son of God. The ordinary people, poor people, they don't know what's going on. What game is being played? Who knows?
Now, you mentioned that the different Qurans are just different readings, while in the Bible they're variants. No, no, no. They're variants. The hadith I gave you, where the first one, remember it said, by the male and the female, and then the next one said, by him who created the male and the female. That is a textual variant. Kul or colour changes the subject of the verse. That is a, a variant. It's not just, oh, they just bring out different meanings. They change the subject. The book must have a meaning. You can't just apply limitless numbers of meaning to it, otherwise it has its meaninglessness. Now, uh, and so I just want to point this out again, that all of, the, all of the Qurans around the world are not the same. Different Qurans. I've come to Birmingham and I've just picked up two new versions of the Quran, which I don't currently have. And uh, there's 1,354 differences between these two Qurans, changing the, 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 the um, subject of the sentence, the, the pronoun which is being used, or the active or passive or the verbs or things like that. So we really need to stop exaggerating about these things because it seems to me that for Muslims, all these variants that I've shown, and um, we haven't even looked at... How much time have I got? I've got enough time. No, I may not be finding it here. But um, whenever, we, whenever I show variants for the Quran, what Muslims say is, oh, it, it, it's all ordained by Allah. All of those variants, all those thousands of variants are, are ordained. But any variant for the Bible, oh, that shows it's corrupted. And so we've got two very different standards that are used. used. Any variant for the Quran that I show, and I've actually got some of the um, Sanar manuscripts. It's worthwhile trying to find it. Uh, in the Santa manuscripts now, we actually have found some of these pre-Athman Qurans. Here we go. So you see those Qurans there. You can actually see the, the script underneath it. And so what they did was they didn't burn all the Qurans as we read in the Hadiths. What they did is they washed them off. And so in Islam, we've got all these different variants. And they're what, in the early centuries, they're washing the Qurans, washing all the early Qurans and writing the standard text on top. And we're now discovering these in the Sana manuscripts. And so you'll see in that second quote there, the significance of the Sana 1, Stanford 07 manuscript, is that the lower text does not belong to the Uthmatic tradition. In this sense, it is non athmatic That is, it, it's not the, it's, it, the Quran in there it does not belong to these Qurans. It's a completely different constamental text. So who are you, man? I'm the party pooper. Now, I made a distinction in my opening statement, actually my first rebuttal, that what the Muslims have is a case of multiple readings, what the Christians have is a case of variant readings. Let me recite what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said again. When this Quran has been revealed to me to be recited in seven different ways, so recite of it whichever way is easier for you, or read as much of it as may be easier for you. Now these, we have one skeleton text and multiple ways to recite it that go back to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And our um, different ways of reading it actually complement each other. I gave you one example of God being the owner and God being the king of day of judgment. Whereas the Bible writers never gave no Christians uh, extra ways of reading their text. Also, the different variants found in the manuscripts, some, some can change Christianity itself. Like, did Jesus tell a lie in John chapter 7? Um, Samuel never touched upon it. Um, was Jesus adopted at the baptism? Samuel never touched on it. You see, the difference between me and Samuel is when I quote arguments against Christianity, I always bring up arguments that the Christians themselves acknowledge. He mentions a lot of things. He tells you are by the creation of the male and the female or by the male and the female. He doesn't give the Islamic position on it. He gives you half the story. Yes, they were both revealed by the Prophet, peace be upon him, but one was abrogated and we all united on Usman radiallahu's text. So, you know, like he says, oh, one says Gul, say, another says Kala, but they both complement each other. One says God commanded it, the other said the Prophet said it. As Surah 4, Ayah 80 says, obey Allah and obey his messenger. As William Moore said, a Christian missionary from 200 years ago, who read all these same hadiths that Samuel read, and he tried to claim the Quran has to be preserved, and he was no friend of Islam, William Moore. He says to this day, 12 centuries, there has been no pure text like the Quran. William Moore said that, an Orientalist who had an axe to grind with Islam. So we got enemy testimonies who acknowledge that the Quran is preserved. But you, we got your own biblical scholars. You still haven't told us where's Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. You haven't told us where the 
book of Nathan is. He says, oh, oh they, weren't, when, they weren't collected. They weren't collected because you ain't got them to collect. So when he claims the Bible's been preserved, he's just um, telling half the story because the Bible itself proves that it hasn't been preserved. He mentions that the Quran has got favorite readings, but I made it clear the Quran has got multiple readings that go back to the Prophet and they complement each other. They don't contradict each other and change theology like the biblical variants. Do not get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that the Quran's corrupt by doing this. Right? Because I actually think that this is something we both have. We both have small variants within our text, and we just shouldn't exaggerate about it. And that's all I'm asking Muslim leaders to do. But the idea is, is there's an implicit admission here that I've lost. This is, this is what I come up with. I've lost. I have a, a admitted defeat. Therefore, I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going to try and take you down with me. That's, that's really what you're trying to say to me. We both have small variants within our text. We both have small variants within our text. So we really need to stop exaggerating about these things. Sometimes there are bigger differences like the end of Mark's Gospel or John chapter 8, as I've put up there. But it's only those two which are the big differences. The rest of the time it's actually quite small, the differences between them. Well, it, you're all over the place. You're fumbling all over the place.